Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about advice for first year medical students. So if you don't know who I am, um, hi, hello, I'm Magda. I am going into my second year at the University of Cambridge studying medicine and first year for me was really a big learning curve. I have had time to reflect, to look back and with retrospect there are a lot of things that I've learnt of what I should have done in first year, what I really shouldn't have done and I've had a chance to look around, see what other people were doing and see how that worked out for them so now at this point I have a much better idea of how to approach medical school than I did when I was actually going into it. So I thought, why not share some advice with anyone who's going into med school? This video is split up into two main sections, the first being general advice for going into your first year of medical school, and the second being specific advice for how to approach each module that will probably be covered in first year so anatomy physiology and biochemistry those are the main ones that i'm going to be talking about i just want to put it out there that i know that different medical schools teach different things some teach certain parts that others don't teach within these subjects so i try to generalize the advice as much as possible obviously if you're coming to cambridge then 100% of this will apply to you. But without further ado, I am actually gonna start off with the modular advice. So if this isn't your cup of tea, if you don't wanna to listen to this, then you can skip to the time on the screen to hear some general advice for how to approach medical school, how to survive your first year of med school. If you're still here, then yay. <laughs> um, and let's just get started. I'm gonna start off with anatomy because I have the most to say about it. Um, so anatomy, I liked it the most just because it was the most clear cut out of all the three modules that I'm going to talk about. It is definitely, there's a level of understanding that you need to have for anatomy, but more so than all the other modules, it is most certainly a memory game. Like you just need to remember everything. First thing I'm going to say about anatomy is try to relate structure to function as you go along. So obviously you're learning all of like the intricate details of like the structure of your upper limb. Try to relate that to the actual function of that body part um, because not only will it be much more helpful if you're thinking about the clinical aspects of anatomy because at least for us we did have clinical aspects in our exam and it's much easier when you can relate structure to function in that sense but it also means that you have a much better understanding. It's easier to remember the intricate structure when you can relate it to something as visible as a certain movement that you can perform, especially for Cambridge or any other medical school that makes you write essays. It is helpful to be able to compare structures of different parts of the body based on their function, most notably like the upper limb and the lower limb. Thinking of anatomy not only as like the intricate details that you're learning, but also as a whole, as a whole body plan. Thinking, okay, so inside the body you have this, 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 that is needed for this, this, this movement, or to be able to do this, this, and this, which allows us to function normally and allows us to live the way we do um, because ultimately that is the point of anatomy. As for learning anatomy, firstly do try and actually learn the whole course. I know it's really tempting not to and for the other two modules you can probably get away with being a bit vague on some things but with anatomy try to have a decent knowledge and understanding of all parts of the body that you cover. We had dissection and prosection sessions which was like used to learn the majority of like the anatomy but then we also had lectures alongside which taught us like applied anatomy, um, more about the development of the body plans so like embryology and also just general stuff to do with like the nervous system, random bits like that. And I think a lot of people neglected the lectures, especially embryology, and that kind of came to bite us all in the butt um, in the exam, which I kid you not, was about 50% embryology. I don't know what they were thinking, but 
yeah, so as for how to approach learning anatomy, it is a very visual subject, obviously, and if you're being tested on prosections, if your exam is like a station thing with prosections and identifying things, you really need to not only revise the details, but be able to relate those to a prosection in front of you. Like you need to know how everything relates to everything else, what it actually looks like within the body. And so I would really highly recommend that whilst you're revising, make sure to look at images, try and relate all the details that you're learning to an image, make sure that you not only, for example, know all the branches of the descending aorta, but that you can also identify them in a prosection and know where they lie, because if you can't, then there's, there's no use knowing them and then not being able to answer an exam question. Some great resources for this are atlases, so you can get atlases that actually go through prosections, have labelled images of prosections so you can learn from those and test yourself by covering up labels. There's an app called, I think, Visible Body where it's like a 3D structure of part of the body. You can twist it round, you can click on stuff to learn more about it, you can see how everything relates to everything else. I personally didn't use it but I wish I had. There are also the Ackland videos on YouTube, I'll put the name on the screen but these are so useful honestly it is basically being taught the whole course of anatomy by someone who is very knowledgeable and based on prosections it's as though you were having like a prosection slash dissection session one on one with someone and they were just teaching you everything basically he goes through each part of the body shows you all of like the structures on actual prosections talks about all the little bits about them that you need to know so for example muscles origins insertions innovation function all that kind of stuff and it's very 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 useful as for learning the majority of like the tiny nitty gritty details flashcards are the way to go um you can just put like which nerve innovates x muscle put the nerve on the back and just quick fire test yourself Anki is a really, 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 really great resource. Um, basically, you can make your own flashcards on this. I think it's an app and you can also get it on your laptop. But once you've done a flashcard, it asks you whether you knew the flashcard, you really didn't know the flashcard, or you kind of are still a bit unsure. Um, and based on which of those options you choose, it shows you it, I think, either a minute later if you really didn't know it, or 10 minutes later again. And so when you're going through your pack of flashcards, flashcards that you didn't remember will come up again and again, and eventually once you've finished, yes, it may have taken you a bit more time, but you are so much more likely to remember every single flashcard than just to go through it once and be like, okay, there are a few I didn't know, but like, whatever. Also, if you just want to do some chilled flashcard studying, because Anki can get quite intense, um, you can search up other people's flashcards on Quizlet. There are loads that have been made and honestly it's so much more useful to do that um, than to make your own if you're just looking to casually flick through some flashcards. Another great resource that I used a lot was a website called Teach Me Anatomy. It is so useful. You search up median nerve on the internet, it comes up on Teach Me Anatomy and it tells you everything you could want to know about the median nerve. So its path, like where it travels, it has diagrams, it tells you which muscles it innervates, which parts of the muscles it innervates. It is so handy. Oh, and the branches of it, honestly, brilliant. Using mnemonics is going to save your life in anatomy. There are so many of them, you can find lists of them on the internet, you might get taught some of them, but they are so useful for remembering things because there are usually so many exceptions. Trying to learn each muscle in the hand separately and being like, this one's supplied by this one, this one's supplied by this one, this one's supplied by the other one, this one's supplied by... Like, it's harder than just having a rule of like, all the nerve except for half loaf. Lastly, for anatomy, I think it is so, so, so important to pre-read. Um, for the dissection and prosection sessions. To be fair, this is important for like all of your lectures, for all of your modules. Please pre-read if you can, it will make your life so much easier and it will help your understanding so much more. But especially for anatomy, you are not going to know what's going on in the session if you haven't pre-read. The amount of sessions where I stood there and I was like, I have no idea what's going on. Like. They run them, at least at Cambridge, in a way that expects you to already have some sort of knowledge about that area. 
And if you have no idea what's going on, you're not going to have any idea of what's going on by the time you leave because people aren't going to explain things from scratch. They expect you to have read it already. And it's just going to mean that you can make use of those sessions that you're given so much more. And then after the session, make sure that you consolidate, go back through your notes, make flashcards, notes, etc. And just try and like learn anatomy as you go along. This is the easiest module, I'd say, to learn as you go along. We're now going to move on to the horror <laughs> that is physiology. I will put this out there straight away. I did not like physiology. I found it the worst out of all the modules. I didn't understand it and that's the problem. Physiology is one big massive fat case of understanding what you're actually doing. If you don't get it, you have no chance. Once you actually understand the content, learning it is not that hard for physiology. It lends itself to be learned easily if you actually know what's going on and that's, to be fair, that's the case for most things. If you actually understand something, you're so much more likely to be able to learn it. I would highly, highly advise if there's anything to like get behind on and miss lectures of, it is not physiology. <laughs> Do not, because as soon as you're behind, it gets really confusing and it gets really hard to catch up and trying to get yourself to understand physiology is much harder than just going to a lecture and having someone explain it to you. Even if you don't get it in the moment, trying to then understand it by yourself is much easier once you've had someone try to explain it to you than trying to get it from the lecture notes from scratch. If you don't understand something, ask for help. Please, please don't be afraid to ask for help. I know that going into university it can be quite daunting because the whole vibe is like independent studying, you're supposed to take control of your own learning, it's all like about independence and doing things by yourself but if you don't get something, and this is the case for all of the modules, please ask someone for help and chances are that if you're confused about something, someone else is probably confused about it as well and even if they're not, don't be afraid to ask. I know that it's so easy to feel really stupid and to think that everyone around you is going to think you're stupid for asking that question because they all seem to understand it but you don't. Even if they do all understand it, you're there to get your degree. You're working towards your own degree and your own grade at the end of the day and it doesn't matter how long it takes you to understand something. All that matters is that by the end of the year when you come to sit the exam, you do understand everything and everyone learns at different rates, everyone understands different things better than others. Also something that we did towards the end of the year, like an exam term for physiology, was that we would try to go through it in a group, which really, really helped like get some friends and work through stuff together. So we would meet up and we had our own questions and basically we tried to explain stuff to each other. Um, so if someone had a query, likely someone else kind of knew how to explain it and if not then we would try and work through it together logically if we then still couldn't do it didn't understand it then we were like okay we need to take this and ask someone about it but number one explaining things to other people means that you really really do understand it like if you can explain it to someone then you're fine on that topic. Working through things by yourself or like in a group and actually using your own brain to figure out a problem and get to the answer means that you are so much more likely to remember that process than if someone explains that process to you. In physiology, things tend to interlink a lot, like a lot. So I think it's quite useful as you're going through learning the course to try to form links between different parts of the course for yourself just so that by the time you get to revision, you don't have to do that from scratch. You already kind of understand how everything sort of fits together. Think systemically, but also think functionally. So we at Cambridge at least were taught physiology systemically. So we did nerves, muscles, heart and circulation, respiratory, kidneys. It was all like kind of separate systems of the body. But functionally, all of these systems interlink and all help towards different like parts of homeostasis or physiological processes, even if it's just quickly jotting down like maintaining blood pressure and 
or the ways in which the body maintains blood pressure, how it all interlinks, write like little stories out for yourself. And the last thing with physiology is, it is mainly processes, how the body works. Unfortunately, there is quite a lot of physics in there. <laughs> um, so I would suggest if you're looking for something to do before you start med school, if you're super like eager and keen and just wanna do something, go back over physics, especially if you haven't done it at A-level, chances are you've forgotten everything from GCSE physics. Go back through certain parts, especially electrical circuits. Literally, you wouldn't think, that was my least favorite topic of GCSE, and you really wouldn't <laughs> think that in physiology at medical school you'd be there with like your electrical circuits, but it all kind of relates like conductance, velocity, voltage even um current like related to nerves and stuff there is a bit of physics you need to be able to do calculations and lastly biochemistry um another one of those subjects that you either love or you hate um personally i didn't mind biochemistry i think it's a good in between between in between between wow today's just not the day <laughs> um between physiology and anatomy um because obviously both have aspects of understanding and learning, like memorizing, but they're very like towards the polar ends of the spectrum. Um, whereas biochemistry is like a good in between. There is a lot of understanding that you need for biochemistry. You need to actually understand how these processes work, how they come about. But there is also so much memorization of like chemicals and processes and like Ugh. Flow charts for biochemistry are probably the most useful form of like note taking or revision. Someone made a massive flow chart of metabolism in exam term and shared it with us and it was honestly amazing. If you're a visual learner, number one, these are so useful because in the exam you can think back like, okay, where did I see that on the flow chart and like you can visualize it. But also, it just had how everything related to each other in metabolism. So, for example, the Krebs cycle and how all of those reactants um, related to like certain amino acids and how that related to the urea cycle and how glycogen and fat fit into all of like the substrates. Like it was just all a big mess of arrows, but it also made sense and had everything laid out visually in front of you. So you were like, okay, all these eight lectures or nine lectures of metabolism are here, like the key points, and now I can learn this and understand it. Diagrams are also really useful for biochemistry because it is biochemistry. Um, making up stories to remember stuff, because it is so like process-based, as is physiology to some degree, but I found especially biochemistry, I was like, okay, so this is like a cute little story um, of how a protein gets from a ribosome to the cell membrane. Flashcards are also useful for biochem, mainly for learning chemical names and like what they do. Um, so for example, I learned the amino acids and like the shortened versions and whatever through flashcards because apparently we needed to know that. Again, as with physiology, yes, biochemistry is at a cellular level, but make sure to not forget about the big picture. So you have metabolism relating to your muscles, your liver, your pancreas, like it all kind of interlinks, obviously. And lastly, a resource that I found quite useful were videos on YouTube. Again, there was a YouTube channel called AK Lectures on the screen again. It's very diagrammatic and very easy to follow. So if you don't quite understand a topic, that channel is a good place to go. Now we're finally gonna move on to some advice for going into med school. So first things first, it's hard. It's a hard transition. Um, and I know that it can feel so, I don't know how to, like imposter syndrome is real. I think the key thing is don't overthink it and trust that you are there for a reason. You were let into the medical school because the admissions tutors thought you were a suitable fit. And so yes, at the time, it may feel like you're so behind um, compared to everyone else. You're really struggling. You're going to fail. Like, why am I even here? Let's just quit. 
um, but trust me it gets better it really really does and eventually you will get over imposter syndrome you have probably never in your life been bombarded with so much information at once to learn and not exactly really been told how to go about getting this information into your brain how to go about learning it managing all like your time because it is completely different to a level and it will take time to adjust so just keep that in mind when you're going into uni you're not a failure just because you're sat in a supervision or a seminar or whatever having absolutely no idea what is going on you will get there eventually and following on from that don't get discouraged if you feel like you don't know anything or you feel like you keep just forgetting everything um it will take time for things to stick in your head it'll take time for you to understand things um and you definitely have to go over things a few times before you're like okay i definitely know this um even by the exam you probably know a lot more than you think you do don't stress yourself out about that too much and i know that when i first got to medical school i was actually in utter shock because you get your like lecture material and it says like eight lectures and yet it's about this thick and you're just like how am i supposed to remember that and you look at your timetable and you have about like 50 lectures throughout the year not throughout the year throughout the term and then you're just like it is definitely doable another kind of cheesy piece of like advice or reassurance is to remember why you're actually doing this like why you're putting yourself through this because especially when things get really really tough um and you kind of want to quit and give up and like move to alaska um it's really easy to forget especially if you don't have clinical like any clinical studies in your first year it's important to recognize if you're really really stressed recognize if you're not feeling okay and just take a step back and think right i'm doing this because i want to be a doctor if that's why you're doing medicine and remind yourself of why you want to be a doctor and that kind of realization can really keep you going the next point is to try and keep on top of everything as much as you can from the get-go it is so much harder to catch up on things than to just stay on top of it from the start and i definitely needed to hear this when i went into medical school so that's why i'm saying this now don't fall behind from the very beginning because you will be behind the whole time and especially the intensity of med school and the pace at which you go at anyway means that you feel behind even when you're not behind because there's always something else you could be doing so if you are actually physically behind it's just you feel so bad about yourself and you're really not in a good state and it's just really really hard so try your absolute best from the very start of term just to stay on top of it do your pre-reading do your um consolidation after lectures etc however whilst that may be the case it is also really really important that you don't burn yourself out i can definitely see how it is very very easy to go into medical school and be like right i'm here to be a doctor so i'm going to learn absolutely everything i'm going to go above and beyond um and like i'm going to know everything because like i i need it to be a good doctor when in reality you can only be tested on the content that is in your lecture handouts like lecture notes whatever you can't be tested on stuff from a 500 page or so textbook that was not taught to you so there is no point of reading that textbook other than to explain something to yourself if you don't get it or just to search something up there is already so much content that they give you in your course that that is well enough to keep you busy i literally bought no i didn't buy don't buy textbooks number one they're in the library um i took out textbooks that were recommended like a textbook for each of my subjects and did i use them really ever no i used the anatomy one to begin with for like i used it about twice left it never looked in it again um i used this massive biochemistry one about twice as well for an essay just because there really wasn't enough about that topic in the lecture material but again i only read about a page of it and that was it and did i ever look in the physiology textbook 
absolutely not. So there is really not much point, like don't take them out of the library if you don't need it at that time. And finally, the last thing to say is please, please, please don't forget about your social life. It is actually very, very, very important that you have a social life of some sort, whatever social life means to you, even if it's just hanging out with friends really chilled in the evening. You don't have to be like a party animal and go out, but make sure that you make time for friends, make time for calling your family, make time for just yourself, even if you just have like a quiet night in. Make sure you give yourself downtime um, and don't completely get sucked into just your degree and forget about any of your hobbies that you have, forget about any extracurriculars because at the end of the day, you will suffer in the long term because of that. And university, whilst yes, you're at medical school, it's hard, you're trying to become a doctor, it's still like you're going to university for the university experience, which includes social life and socializing and having a good time because realistically, this will probably end up being like the best time of your life. That's basically it, That that's this video. So I hope you found it helpful somewhat. Um, if you did, then be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel for more advice to do with medical school, um, my medical school vlogs, which are returning very soon since I go back in like two weeks. Ah, um, And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.